Good morning, everybody. It's Tom Christie back in the painting studio. I'm working on this Gadwall Drake, but I got inspired to do a miniature gunning black duck cork bodied, and uh, it sounds like it's going to be a fun project. And I just thought I'd take you through that, and I'm going to try to complete this in a relatively short amount of time, but I thought it might be a nice project to feature on my channel. So I found a nice profile picture of a black duck on the water. I'm going to use that to create a pattern. I just used my iPad to get it. It needs to be six inches or less in length. So I just used my iPad to get it to the proper size, and then I can trace a side pattern, develop a top pattern, and then get to the carving part of this. But I'll zoom in a little bit on the uh, process of creating the pattern. I just thought this would be a fun project and you can apply this to a cork bodied uh, full size or magnum uh, hunting decoy as well. Same process, it's just gonna be a miniature size. So this should be fun. Okay, so I've got it sized to less than six inches, which is the goal. And uh, just a note, I did take a snapshot of the picture once I had it sized, and that way, when I touch the screen, it's not going to be resizing or moving around as I make the pattern. So I'm going to use tracing paper, put it over the picture and I'll take my time and trace around this and you don't have to watch all of that but show you enough that you get the idea and in this small scale it's important that the lines are accurate because it's going to be very easy to get out of proportion quickly on small scale. So I'll go ahead and trace this and then come back. All right, I've got the side pattern traced and then this is the water line. So I'm just adding some draft below the water line. That would be the portion of the decoy under the water when it's in flotation. So now we need to develop a top-down pattern to match this. Also, I picked this side profile because I really like this. The tertials are dropped down. The wingtips are just right here laying on the top of the tail. And then this rump area is kind of elevated. And I think that would look pretty cool in a cork body decoy where there's no... Uh, wingtip sticking up or anything nice smooth this characteristic profile of a black duck on the water with that tail right there so i've got to sketch in the tertials the rear of the side pocket you can see a touch of the elbow or leg joint there and then get the side pockets sketched in as well and i'm just using my you know roughing that in so I've got the tertials here located I've got the primaries laying in there the tail sketched in now uh, and I also sketched in the side pockets just kind of eyeballing it since accuracy is not going to be too critical here but we want to be uh, characteristic so I think that looks pretty good now we'll extend lines down so that we can draw a top-down pattern. I'll show you how I do that. All right, now I'm going to use my square. Line it up with the water line. So we have uh, perpendicular lines here. I'm going to go from the end of the tail down, from where the tail meets the body here, down from the side pocket, rear of the side pocket, down. From the front of the decoy here.
Then I'm going to put a center line here. Now I've got to determine, well, what's the proper width of the decoy? So I'm going to use some ratios. I'll get a measurement of the length of this, compare that with the length of an actual life-size bird, and then use that ratio to come up with a dimension here for the width of the overall decoy. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. All right, now I've got the actual size, length of the body, and this is from a pat gotten pattern, so I know it's pretty accurate. The length is 14 inches from the breast to the tip of the tail in roughly this position. The width of the body across is seven inches. I know the length of this mini that I'm putting together is 4.75 inches. And we need to find out, well, what's the proper width? We'll just do a little math and we can figure that out. Okay, so I don't want to get too deep into math, but this is very helpful when you're doing upsizing or downsizing of patterns. Um, we know the actual length of a real bird based on Pat Godden's pattern is 14 inches. I know the length of the mini that I've drawn is 4.75 inches. So if I divide 14 by 4.75, that's 2.95, and that becomes our dividing factor that we can use for any of these actual dimensions, like the width of the body, the bill width, the head width. If we divide those numbers by this number, we get the corresponding number on the mini. So, uh, I did that for the width of 7 inches divided by that, and it's 2.375. So we know the width of the mini is going to be 2 and 3 eighths inches. And then I uh, put that on my center line and then sketched in the rough pattern using these guidelines from above and the side profile to line things up correctly. And now we have a top-down pattern. I created, flip it over, put it on my cardstock, tape it in position so it doesn't scoot around on me, and then trace around these and transfer that to the cardstock underneath. Done that. I'm just going to go back and clean this up where it's transferred to the card stock. And then we'll cut these out. Now I want to develop the top-down head pattern. And just going back to the ratios, I know the bill width from Pat's pattern is 7 eighths of an inch divided by the 2.95. It's about 5 sixteenths for my mini. Same with the head width in the actual, it's 2.25 divided by that. It's about three quarters of an inch. So I'll use those two dimensions and begin to lay out the top down head pattern. Now I'm just transferring those dimensions up where I can use the width of the bill and the head to generate a top down head pattern. All right, I've got those cut out, and one more thing I'm going to do is uh, separate the head from the body here. Now we're ready to go. All right, I cut a little piece of high-density cork to the proper size and nice and square, and I've put my patterns top and side on that block. I'll bandsaw that out, and then I'm using a little piece of pine, three-quarter inch width is perfect for this uh, head. So I'll cut that out as well. And I'm speeding up the video two times, just so you're aware of that, uh, just so this goes a little quicker. But I'm cutting at half the speed, actually. 
especially in small pieces like this, you've got to keep your fingers away from the blade. Just be very careful. Now I'm cutting that front breast profile from the side. And then cutting off the tail section underneath. I'm le leaving some thickness on the tail so we have some strength there. Now I've used a nail to tack on that top scrap piece so that I can cut the top down profile. Same approach as on larger decoys. This is again at twice speed. Kind of close work, so keep your fingers away from that bandsaw blade. Now we've got the body cut out. Now I've got the side profile drawn on the uh, three quarter inch piece of pine. This is even smaller, so I'm gonna run this normal speed so you can see how slow I'm cutting. And I left a little extra length on this block of wood so I'd have a little bit of a handle uh, to keep my hands away from the, the blade. This is just kind of meticulous, slow work, especially with a quarter inch blade. This is not a jigsaw, so you kind of have to work around these tight curves with that quarter inch bandsaw blade. So I'll go ahead and cut out the rest of this and then we'll move on. All right, I've got the pieces cut out. Just a note, if I was gonna do this again, I wouldn't use such a large nail because as I pulled that out, did a little bit of damage to the cork there. I'll patch that up with uh, pieces of ground, or basically cork sawdust, but I also uh, cut out a little oak keel. Since we're making this a, a mini hunting decoy. So now we can start to shape up the pieces. I got a little cork sawdust from the bandsaw using a small amount of five minute DevCon epoxy and just mixing up a little cork putty We want this to be primarily cork because we're going to scorch this bird when we're done. And I don't want it scorching the resin. I want it scorching the cork as much as possible. So I'm just going to press that into this little area that I took the nail out. And that should cover up that flaw or the little gouge from the nail hole. All right. I just drilled a small hole for the anchor line and put a little bevel on there so it looks official. I put a center line on the head and I've got my pattern and just giving myself a guideline on the bill. Try not to move the pattern around while you're doing it. So I'll use the coping saw to cut that like we do on a full-size decoy and take some material off the back of the head as well. Not much to hang on to with this little guy, so we got to be careful here. I'm going to speed the video up as I'm making these cuts so you can see the process. Let's see it faster. I'm doing this side, do the same on the other side. There's not much wood to work with, so we can't make too deep a cut here. 
Now I'll do the back. Now I'm going to use my dividers to get a dimension on the length of the bill back to the cheek area. I know it's going to be right in there, so I'll give myself a guideline on both sides. Again, very small scale, but we still need to keep things in proportion. So I know that bill is going to come back to about right there. And I'm a little too wide right now, up above. That's okay. I'll remove material to get down to the, that, this dimension all the way back to the cheeks. By the way, I also put a screw in here to give me something to hang on to when we're doing some of this delicate carving on the head. It's too small to hang on to. All right, I've got the head ready to carve now. I just want to get the body ready to carve, and then we can do both as we're at the carving bench. Same with a full-size decoy. I'm going to round a little bit down here. Same over here. I put a center line on. Uh, I do want to give myself a guideline on the neck. So let's see. It's about... that size, so I'm just going to transfer that to the cork, just to give myself an idea where that head's going to lie. I forgot I also need to map out the tail position, so I'm getting a dimension there, and we'll transfer that to the decoy on both sides. And as I mentioned before, I am just going to carve this tail out of cork. If this was a full-size hunting decoy, I would use an insert here with a hardwood for the tail or cedar, something that's going to hold up to wear and tear. But for this mini, uh, I'm just going to carve the tail into the cork. All right, now we're ready. I'm going to use this bullet-shaped ruby bit, uh, especially this work is so tight and close to my hands. I don't want to use any kind of a burr that if I would make a slip into the into my thumb there, a burr would rip. The ruby bit is more like a sanding bit, so it's it may hurt, but not as much. So I like to just use uh, ruby bits for this small work on these miniatures just gives you better control. Uh, cuts a little, a little slower, but that's okay. So I'm gonna speed the video up here and we'll just watch the whole sequence as I shape this head. I'm first using the bit to kind of define where the bill meets the cheek and then round the cheek into that area. We had to narrow the bill up a bit as it goes back to meet the face. Now I'm digging in underneath and uh, using that guideline of the neck that we drew down below and taking material out here so there's a little bit of an undercut in that area and then rounding that. So we have, we're beginning to form this hourglass shape from the front. I'll do that on the other side as well. You can see I'm not always hanging on to the screw, but it's a good stabilizer, and then it's there if I need it, like here. Now I'm just rounding the, the bill a little bit. We won't do any details on the bill since this is meant to be a, a, sim, a miniature gunning decoy or kind of a replica of a gunning decoy in a miniature size. So now I want to determine where the notch is. And that I'm using the dividers and the pattern to set that point. Then I'm going to change bits and go with a, a small cylindrical ruby here. 
and gouge out that notch, leaving the the notch high and taking the bill down on both sides. Now I can use that notch as a guideline to, I know the width of the crown that I want. And now I can change bits again, back to the ruby bit and begin to remove material along that eye line and above to narrow the crown. So I'm going for that guideline above. And once I hit that, then I can round the cheek a little bit and blend that back into the where it goes to the back of the head. Get the other side here. Same process. So I'll skip ahead. Okay, I got that side shaped up like the other side. Making sure things are symmetrical and working under the throat there to round things out. Just making sure that's as narrow as it needs to be up there at the top of the bill. Okay, I've got things shaped up pretty well and starting that hourglass shape. Now I want to work to define that uh, bill dimension where it meets the cheek. And we'll kind of refine that a little bit with a little sharper bit and also carve in that return where the lower and upper mandible meets. So I'm getting a dimension there to see how far back on the head I need to remove wood. Now I'm going with a little cylindrical, probably one eighth inch. No, this, I'm sorry, this is a very small diameter cylinder. It's so small, I need this type of precision. So I'm using that little ruby bit to really cut in and define the shape of the bill as it meets the face. So I'm using the pencil to kind of give myself a, a guideline and I've penciled in the lower mandible separation. Now I'll use that same bit to separate the upper and lower mandible. So I'm re removing material on the lower mandible. So there's a little shadow there between the upper and lower. And then just using that bit to blend things out into the face. But there you can see that separation of the upper and lower mandible. Now I'm going to use a little pyramid shaped bit and dig in a little further on the eye channel. Make that a little deeper so that the eyes can be set not too wide, far apart. And I can use this bit to, to round things out around the neck and the underside as well. It's a little tighter to get in there so this bit works good in that, uh, in that area. Doing the eye channel on the opposite side. So there's a little bit of a shadow cast there. And now I can begin to round the crown. And I'm just using that same ruby bit to do that rounding of the crown on both sides. and then blend everything together as much as possible. 
and with a ruby bit, you can minimize the amount of sanding you need to do afterwards. Head's in pretty good shape. Now I'm going to move to the body, and I'm using that bullet-shaped ruby bit. And this cork really grinds quickly, it comes off quickly. So again, I'm using a ruby bit here so that I don't gouge too deeply into the cork. And it's almost like sanding this cork off. You can see good dust collection is a must with cork because it's pretty messy material. But uh, my system is doing a good job of picking that up and keeping it out of my face. Now I'm just rounding the lower edge of the decoy using that guideline that we penciled in. This is all at twice speed, by the way. Now I'll use that bit to round the area and form the area around the neck there. And that little separation between the breast and the side pocket area. You can also use a knife with cork. I just wanted to demonstrate that you can do that. And maybe speed things up a little bit. But it goes pretty quick with a ruby bit or a sanding drum with cork. So I'm just going to finish up with the ruby bit here. In general, I'm just rounding things, so I think I'll skip through this part of the video until we get to more shaping. Just kind of finishing up with the ruby bit. I've got it generally rounded, and now I'll switch over to the sanding drum. It's about 150 grit, and the uh, sanding drum does a good job with the cork. Just sanding things smooth and also removing more material and rounding things in general. So at this point, I'm just going to use the sanding drum to smooth things out before we get to actually shaping side pockets and the cape and other parts. Just skipping ahead and finishing up with the sanding drum. That's looking nice and rounded. It's starting to look like a decoy. All right, we've got the body rough shape. Get the light over here, so generally rounded. Now I want to lay out the side pockets, just like we do on a larger full-size decoy. A little trickier to see my marks here, but I don't want to gouge the cork. I just want to know where I'm starting from and then get a dimension on this dip down. So come down to this point, both sides, right there. Now we can kind of sketch in the side pockets. That goes back up. It's a hunting decoy, so I'm not going to undercut anything there. And then we want to, it's a hunting decoy. It's, it's a simulate, it's a mini, but uh, you get the point. Now I want to lay out the top view. So back to the cape. It's right around that area. These are going to come up to here on both sides. And then I want a dimension not the full width here. These are pretty rough. And I'm working quick so the video doesn't get too long and so that you don't fall asleep. Okay, so that gives me my guidelines from the top. 
and it's going to be quick work to carve this out a little bit to give this some shape. We'll get that done. And then I'm going to want to carve in a little bit of an indication of the uh, tertials and the primaries there. And I'm going to use that bullet shaped ruby bit and very quickly remove that material and then round in both directions, like we do on a full size decoy, but this goes a lot quicker because it's cork and uh, the surface area is so much smaller in a miniature. Catching that other side pocket as well. Now I'm going to work the cape, dig down a little bit behind the cape, Create that V knot V in the back and leave the cape raised slightly. Round that off so there are no rough edges. I'm just generally smoothing things out and making sure there's enough definition in those side pockets that they can be seen. So I'm deepening that area in front a little bit just so they cast a little bit more shadow. And then forming that area on both sides. Now I'll switch to the sanding drum and just smooth that work out. So I'll skip ahead so you don't have to watch me sand. Okay, just finishing the rough sanding up and now I want to go back in with a pencil and just remark those lines and take a look at symmetry so that I can see them a little better. Make sure things are looking the way they should. Now I want to work this tertial area and the primaries. The tertials are dropped down into the side pocket in a very relaxed position. And I don't want to carve a lot here, but just indicate the tertial feather group and the primary feather groups. So I'm starting with a little uh, eighth inch cylindrical ruby bit and beginning to form that tertial group as it kind of slides down the, the back of the bird and tucks into the side pocket. And we're gonna leave that area between the tertials raised like it was in the original photo that was the inspiration for the decoy. So I'm working on both sides here, just creating a little bit of a an indication that those primaries are laying in there. It's pretty subtle, but I think it'll look nice in the finished decoy. So I'm undercutting the primaries a little bit so that they cast a bit of a shadow from this uh, downward light. You can see that there. So we want enough carving here that you can see there a couple of primary feather groups and tertial feather groups and that's about all I want to carve into this particular decoy. Now I'm just rounding those tertials as they fade into the back. This is a little bit hard to see as I'm looking at the the video um, because there's not much much contrast so it's maybe a little hard to see what I'm doing here but hopefully you get the picture there's a little better angle that shows you a little bit of a shadow 
I'm going to skip ahead so we can see the finished work here. A little farther along, shaping things up. And I'm just using this bit again to sharpen things up a bit. All of this will have to be sanded, but there in the light you can see a little better the shadows cast by the primaries and the tertials that are dropping down into the side pockets. Now I'm going to finish that up and switch to the sanding drum and do a little bit of sanding on that uh, carving work that I did back there to smooth things out, shape things a little better, and just tie things together. Just skipping ahead here, finishing up the, the rough sanding. Now I'm just going to use some fine sandpaper. This is 220. And uh, just give everything a, a final sanding. Same with the head. For eyes, I'm using stick pins. They have a ball shape, and uh, I've clipped off the end of it. And then I'm just going to press those in place with a little bit of plastic wood in the eye hole. So that's the plan anyway. There we go. Do the same with this side. Plastic wood will just help hold the eye in place. And I'm going to go over it with a little five minute epoxy and wipe that off just to help seal it in place. There we go. I'm going to use DevCon five minute epoxy to glue on the keel. Of course, if this were a full size hunting decoy, I would use some screws along with the epoxy. Since this bird is not gonna have heavy duty, I'm just gonna use the two part epoxy and make sure there's a good bond there. Now for strength, I want to use a little pin. This is a nail that I've cut off, just like we would a dowel or some other method of fastening a full-size decoy head to a full-size body. And uh, I'm using the DevCon 5-Minute Epoxy. I'm just going to spread it around inside that hole and we're going to use the the hole that was for the screw to hold on to the head while we were carving for the uh, pin to go up into the head portion of the decoy and i made these holes a little bit sloppy to help with alignment 
if I'm a little off line, uh, it'll kind of self align that way. Put some glue in the head, spread it around so we have plenty of glue in the hole for that alignment. Once it sets, it'll lock everything together. Just going to put a little additional glue on the pen itself. And that glue is squeezing out, which is not a bad thing. I'm just going to wipe most of it off with a finger so we don't have too much glue to contend with after it's set. Now I can play around with the head and get a pleasing position. I think I'll leave it about like that. I'll let that set and then we'll come back and do a little cleanup around the neck joint. And then we'll be ready to finish the body. Now I'm going to use a propane torch and very carefully, especially since this is so small, I'm going to burn the cork a little bit to create the black duck color. And again, since this is so small, I've got to be very careful. But this is a traditional way of creating a cork black duck decoy, full size. And you can see it kind of chars, but then we'll rub that around a little bit and it creates a really nice black duck color when we're done. So I'll be careful so I don't torch this little buddy, but I'll be back. Once I get a good char, I'm just using some Scotch-Brite material and kind of rubbing it around a little bit and taking off the loose stuff. And it's kind of an iterative process, keep going back and forth to create the look I'm looking for. I'm going to leave the head, I'm going to paint the head so I won't char the head. I will supplement that with a little bit of paint because this small of a bird, it's tough to drive the char into some of these areas, but I just wanted to show you that technique and it does come up with a nice finish uh, when you're done on a full-size decoy. And then you probably want to put some sort of sealer over it to protect the cork a little bit more. I also did the bottom, charred the bottom. Just sealing up the head and the keel with a little bit of deft. I'm trying not to get it on the body itself too much. like that. 